We're, We're Batman, Batman at 89. Hello, and welcome once again to Batman at 89, the podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and rifle through the case files of Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And I am the Plague of the Airwaves, your other host, John Parker. Yeah, Plague, plague of a lot of other things too, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and today we're once again joined by our friend from the last episode, uh, Ash Lerzak. Lerzak? Lerzak. That'll do, that'll do, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ler- Lerchak. Lerchak, yeah. Lerchak, sorry. <laughs> But uh, I've known him for like 10 years and still never, never got that. But, uh, <laughs> well, how often do you use your friend's surname, you know? Mm, mm. But uh, how are you, Ash, anyway? Uh, not, too, not too bad. I, I didn't have to go to work today, so it's been a good day. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, today we're here to talk about Minute 44 of Batman. Minute 44 uh, begins with the, the Joker still cackling away at this <laughs> hilarious joke he came out with. And uh, it ends one minute later with uh, a predator eyeing up her prey. So, oh, that's uh, should we should we just dig right in? Wait, a, a female predator alien? I'm I'm presuming you mean by that? Oh, you'll find out in one minute's time. Oh yeah. my god, I'm excited. I I don't watch these minutes. I just <laughs> you know I just go along for the ride with you. <laughs> yeah, if we jump right in here though, we still see that. Uh, because I thought like uh, there was only like oh there's only like a second of this, but it's like that was a good like ten seconds still of the Joker laughing at the uh, Ratelli's corpse. <laughs> like he's still he's cackling away at this. But um, as the camera sort of slowly pans in and Ratelli, like the uh, Joker kind of walks off, and he has um he, he's kind of like ah, I'm glad you're dead. And then he, as he's out of shot, he he says something else like I can never make out. And then he says ah, I'm glad he's dead, as if he's talking to someone else now. Like, he's, <laughs> I was wondering, like, seven personalities at play. Yeah, yeah, but it's a uh, it's a genuine like question of mine. I was just like, I was trying for the life of me to see, to, like, you know, capture the audio and to get like, because he just kind of goes over and goes, yes, it is, and I'm glad he's dead. Ah! <laughs> it's like, yeah, and it's not in my scripts anyway. That additional little bit, maybe I'm looking at the wrong ones. Mm. But, uh, oh yeah, I think that a lot of this was just like Nicholson riffing on the whole situation, really. It confirms uh, that he's laughing at his own joke and not the joke that the corpse might have made to him inside his own head as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> can rule that out, though. Yeah, I don't know which I prefer and which one's more disturbing. But I'm, I'm wondering if it's, um, he's actually like, this is, he's got Grissom's corpse over there somewhere. He's wandered into another room and Grissom's still <laughs> lying there dead. And he's like, oh, do you hear what I said? I'm glad he's dead. Ah! <laughs> it's like, I think Grissom is having a big, whole big, they like, got a dinner party together with these guys now. Just like, there's one corpse in there, one corpse in the other room. You know, it's it's still a party already. Huh? <laughs> well, I love as well, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's dead. Uh, or I'm glad you're dead, sorry, to be precise, is it not? Um, because, I mean, from what little we saw of him, it's not like he came across as a nice guy or anything. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of siding with Jack. You know, I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> Well, yeah, it does seem like, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a bit of a prick. But fantastic eyebrows, as I believe we discussed. But uh, Oh, yeah. And a fireproof tie as well. Oh, yes. I was sad that the eyebrows weren't still intact fully. I mean, there's, there's a little bit there, but I wanted them, that would be all that's on the head. Mm. Well, the, the tie does kind of survive as well. Though. Like if it, it could have been if it was just, just skelet, completely clean white skeleton eyebrows and the tie. <laughs> then it would, uh, <laughs> like a like a biology lab skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also wondering as well, like, cause like this this laugh ain't it ain't slowing down. Like he's 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 still going for it. Like, and it's, I'm wondering, was this like a like a Mr. Burns laughing at the at the crippled Irishman situation, where like <laughs> hours later he's still going on about this? Like the whole night when Bob got back, he's just like, ah, oh, Bob, what are you hear what I said to the corpse? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So you think he's just going for like an hour straight, yeah. like that, like a podcaster? Yeah, pretty much. It's when it's like broadcast about like analyze this joke one word at a time or something. <laughs> and I thought this might be like a prime opportunity because we've been we've hinted at it before, but uh, while well, he's on, because this is like the last we see of the Joker for uh, this week actually. Oh, I thought it might be a good time to 
haul out the old files of um, actors who were allegedly in talks to play the Joker, or who were considered Ooh. to play the Joker. And Dust off the folders. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to get into all of them, because I'll, I'll, I'll pepper it throughout the whole podcast, because it's like, there's a there's a list, guys. <laughs> and uh, like I was saying to John off mic, like, I think a lot of these aren't real. I think that some of these, <laughs> somebody in IMDb was just like, I heard something that somebody said this one time. <laughs> it's like, I don't think that's that's an accurate, uh, you know, bit of info you got there. But um, I'll start off with like a couple of the, the, the war choice ones I think Ash would have been interested in. Well, no, the, one of the big ones, of course, is uh, Willem Dafoe, who, you know, we've mentioned on the show before. Uh, Willem Dafoe, is a, of course, an actor, could still play the Joker today if he wanted to, because he's still going strong. And he still looks oh, like yeah. a creepy 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 man so <laughs> yeah he's born to play a, a villain mm. so he would be perfect yeah he couldn't play i don't like it when he plays like a good guy sorry <laughs> but, yeah. i can only remember him doing it like one time playing a good guy <laughs> literally like i think it was platoon is the only time because he's like the good the good sergeant and oh, uh, yeah, yeah. you know and charlie sheen's torn between him and tom berenger and like when i remember when i first saw the film i was just like oh, well the foe's the good one how the hell does that work? <laughs> it, just was, it was baffling to me. But, uh, but uh, do you have any Ash? Do you think Willem the Foe? Would you have been yay or nay? Um, I can't, I can't really see it working particularly. But maybe, oh, really? maybe I'm just uh, yeah. He just doesn't doesn't look jokerly to me. He's, he's he's more of a sort of like a I don't know. He's, he's, he's he doesn't he doesn't strike me as as, as being. Well, do you think he would be a good villain in Batman, like as another character? Could he be like Two Face, well, or is he too creepy for that as well? Yeah, he, 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 he sort of resembles more of the sort of comic Harvey Dent than he does the Joker. I suppose he's got he's, he's got the he's got the skull shape, hasn't he? Mm. Quite a, yeah, he's got a, it's like a cartoon face. Yeah, mm. again, no offense, Will. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still kind of stuck. I'm stuck. I thought like of anyone who at least it's like it's like. Willem Dafoe and Crispin Glover are the two people who were like, oh, yeah, they just look like the Joker. <laughs> like, they just... Crispin just... Glover would go for it. That would be amazing. Yeah. I think he was too young. He's one of the people that people consistently say since. Like, every time it comes up, people are like, oh, get Crispin Glover for it. But I think in 89, he would have been... I suppose he would have been too young. But I guess he probably was, like, in his late 20s at that point. But he probably could have pulled yeah, it off. would have been fine. Yeah. Beyond that, of course, then, one of the other big ones was, uh, allegedly, now, uh, David Bowie was supposed to be ah. in consideration. And um, like we were talking off mic about uh, Twin Peaks there, which uh, infamously showcased, like the Twin Peaks movie, uh, showed us a little bit of uh, Bowie's American accent. So oh, brilliant. Yeah, I think they would have had <laughs> oh, that, yes. that to Stella. contend with if they had cast him there, really. I'll tell you what, though. Bowie gets away with it. When Bowie acts and he's not great, or when Bowie acts and he does a bad accent... Nobody cares, because it's David Bowie. He can do what he wants. Mm. You just accept it. Uh, after that, then, of course, uh, Brad Dourif was one. I know that, John, you brought up Brad Dourif in the past. Oh, yeah. One of my preferred choice, if Jack wasn't doing it, probably. Apparently, yes, he was Tim Burton's number one choice as well. And it, it was Warner Brothers who was like, nah, just not, not. I think they were looking more in the line for like a name. So because they already well, had, yeah, a... you know, Michael Keaton, who was just like, oh, it's Mr. Mm. Mom. And it's already enough to contend with there. And I suppose then, like, Brad Dourif's like, well, who's he? You know, it's like, he, yeah. he won that. I mean, you can understand the logic. If you can put Jack Nicholson on the poster, you're going to put Jack Nicholson on the poster. Yeah. But I think then Brad Dourif, because he won an Oscar for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, didn't he? So, with Jack Nicholson, actually, ironically enough. Did Brad get one, too? I think, yeah, he, that was like, the, cause I think it was kind of like his, let's see, did he win, uh, win an Oscar for that? Or maybe he was just nominated. Because I think, like, that was one of... You know, you get some of these actors who have, like, the... Oh, he's nominated. Yeah, he's nominated for Best Supporting. Well, still, good going, Brad. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Brad Dourif would have been... But, but still, like, he's another one, too. If you wanted to do... If they're still contending with this whole, we're doing an older Batman, they should have gone for, like, an older Joker. Get Brad Dourif in. Like, I know he's getting on a bit now, but he's still... He can still do it. It's like, he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh... I got, uh... I'll do two more, because I thought these two were really interesting. Uh... Robert England, who wow, uh, Freddie, <laughs> as a, as he's known to most people, 
these are all people in movies that that like Ash would yeah. love. Oh, that's I've delivered, I've, out of the list. I've deliberately <laughs> chosen these people for when I when I. Oh right, okay. <laughs> You've tailored it to the guys. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Uh, you think like it's the thing with Robert England though, because I, I you know I love Robert England, but he is very sort of hammy. Like he's. Like I, I, I was never scared of Freddy Krueger because it was just wasn't a thing that if like I saw you know I saw the the visuals of him when I was a kid like the actual the the, the appearance of him was frightening, but then to actually watch the films like he himself just like yeah he's not that intimidating a figure like he's he's fun to watch but he's not an intimidating figure I know some people think he's absolutely terrifying but um so because of that then I, the whole th- time too it would have been more like it's Freddy Krueger playing the Joker like it just wouldn't have, I don't think it would have gelled with me, but uh, mm. you think you think he'd, he'd, you know you probably seen him in more stuff, Ash, because I know you're a bit more of a you know Robert England's been in absolutely tons of, of horror films, and I know you're a, a horror film aficionado, so you might be able to go like, well, like, I've seen him in this film, which indicates that he <laughs> actually would have uh, had the, the chops to do this. But uh, I don't know. You, you, you put any you put anyone up to next to Jack Nicholson really, and they, it just they just don't seem that appealing. Yeah. Because you know what you know what the you know what the other option is really. Well, as I say, like because uh, Jack Nicholson was like apparently he was always the the front runner, so I think these were all just sort of like these these were literally like the oh, we can't get him. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they, not like anything would have done a bad job, but you know it's just a different league of acting or whatnot. Mm, mm. But uh, well, I'll do one last one because I, I I think we probably all agree like he he wouldn't have been. I, I can't picture him in this part, but um, nah. going back to Twin Peaks, uh, Jack Nance, who was oh, you know, right. one of the <laughs> most people would at least know him from the poster for a Razorhead. They mightn't have seen the film, but those, everyone's seen that poster for a Razorhead with the Jack Nance and the big hair kind of glaring out at them. And uh, I mean, that would be interesting. It'd be such a different take on the character, though. I couldn't picture it in this movie. Yeah, it's more because he's like. Uh, we have seen him play a creep because he was in. He was, you know, one of uh, Dennis Hopper's gang in Blue Velvet, and he was. Mm. Well, he's not in it much though. He's very quiet as well. He's not having to be flamboyant super villain. And um, of course, then you just know because he, yeah, he's another very quiet character in a razor head. He only has like what five lines in in Dune, <laughs> I think. And, <laughs> and then yeah, playing Pete in Twin Peaks, then it's just like oh, he's like the most lovable man in the world. So it's it's uh yeah I don't know that one I oh. think like I, that's one of the ones I think somebody in the IMDb offices was like yeah yeah th- yeah that happened you know like just they just made that up because they wanted it to happen you know <laughs> but but uh, anyway so that's uh that's it for uh the first first episode of actors who could have played the Joker you need a little jingle for that we'll have to record something so we got that and there's another list of. Guys, that could have done Batman. So, geez, we, could, like, we have to spread these out over time. Cause... <laughs> yeah. We're in Jingle City. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, now I've derailed us for a little bit. Uh, we should probably. Yeah, back to the minute. Back to the minute. <laughs> <laughs> are we done with the corpse or are we moving on? Uh, I think that's. Uh, I've said my last I need to say about Ratelli myself. So. Yeah. It's such a shame there's no facts about the uh, skeleton itself. Like, it's a really well, well done little bit of person there yeah it's amazing work and i think they're, they're quite proud of it because they linger on it for a good few seconds there at the end for no reason whatsoever <laughs> suppose you you know as well ash because you're like a, a man who's over the years for like has had to utilize uh kind of gruesome and ghastly props and corpses and whatnot for uh like theatrical stage shows and like little and like and you know short films and stuff that you've made and things like music videos and stuff so i guess like you might have a, an eye for like that's that's top-notch stuff right there or <laughs> yeah exactly it's uh if, if that if i if, if i could have one of those i'd be very happy <laughs> you're trying to go on ebay like checking every day to see is anyone selling that corpse or... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a tasty raisin <laughs> but yeah then we jump to uh the the news office with uh vicky vale uh in this kind of weird business of like she really looks like she's desperately searching through this um you know the, 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 these files for information on uh bruce wayne but it kind of takes a bit like oh. as if like oh she's been searching up and down for whatever 
but it, it's very apparent that like this is just like the big thing of files I have in the office, and this is the one drawer that says W. And it's like, well, <laughs> it's like, it was not there. Which one could it be in? <laughs> it was under. It was in the B drawer, probably. <laughs> oh, see now that is how I would prefer to file things. Because you again, much like we said at the start of the uh, episode, you call people by the first name ninety nine percent of the time. So B, Bruce. Yeah, that's not how alphabetizing works, though, John. So. I know, and it infuriates me because I have to spend a lot of time alphabetizing things <laughs> at work. So. Also, also, too, like the size of those drawers. The like, guy's like, how many people live in Gotham? Because it doesn't look like it's that many. And that's like the files. Because like, it's not even, you know, like usually in a big filing cabinet, you'll get like the drawers themselves will be really long when you pull them out and they'll be quite mm. like big in any way. But they'll literally. Yeah, but isn't this isn't this at the newspaper office, though? Yeah, but. So isn't this just only people that they've got info on? Yeah, but even at that, though, like you think a, a major metropolitan newspaper. But that info on like hundreds of thousands of, of you know people of interest over the years and whatnot and like maybe in your fascist world. <laughs> but this is just looks like this is looks like my my sock drawer. Like it's just <laughs> and, it's just, and like, there's no way they like you know usually in a file cabinet they'll be like back to back they'll put them up you know uh, vertically. But this was like yeah they're horizontally filed. So it's maybe you get maybe ten in there and that's about it. <laughs> That's ten. Can anyone see what the label on the drawer on the right says? Free, free mink hat. What? <laughs> Something like that. Free mink hat. Let, I'm gonna have to try and look at this. <laughs> That's not let's, a letter. Let's see. <laughs> the alphabet. This is kind of. Oh, meal, meal punk, fifteen or something like that. I cannot make it out. I think my monitor's too dull. Well, then, then we get Knox though. You know, popping up with the file, the file she's looking for, the one on Bruce. And I thought, though, after this, I thought it was a bit strange that she's researching him so much. Because, like, why is she going so overboard with it? Like, did their little encounter at the manor pique her interest? Yeah. Or is it what Alfred said to her afterwards as she was on the way out the door? Well, I, <laughs> I think now, like, it's probably gonna, the next few episodes are going to be pretty much dedicated to this. Because, like, this is now Vicky Vale getting into what is as ostensibly stalker territory like she ca- she came here to look into batman and then she went out on a, br- a date with bruce wayne and there's no indication that she thinks that he's batman like at this point just nothing like unless she you know we were supposed to take him hanging upside down as her been like oh i wonder if he's batman uh as, as far as we know as audience members she came to town and has now went on a date with this millionaire slept with him he lied to get rid of her because uh, his butler is terrible at lying. And now <laughs> now she's just like, very angrily, is just kind of like, I'm going to find everything I, I, I can on this guy. Like, I'm going to, there's no, no one rejects Vicky Vale, okay? And this is like, I'm going to get every little bit of dirt on him. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to know him inside out. That's how much I'm, like, I think, this whole business now is like, you know, Knox is coming over. It's almost like, you know, he's like, oh, I thought we're researching Batman, but now she's she's on to Bruce Wayne for some reason, and uh, no. he can't piece together that, uh, well, maybe Bruce Wayne is Batman, but you know, like that's never what? that doesn't occur to him at all. But like, a minute before we get to that, but uh, yeah, the, the, and then beyond like the the ethics of that, there's this business of because um, Vicky says uh, like uh, she says to him like, oh, this wouldn't be a personal issue for you, would it? And she's just very sort of restless with him. And this is getting into this business of, um, we alluded to it like a few episodes back, but like, uh, Vicky's very much aware that Knox fancies her and she's not told him to just back off or anything. And this is very, this is like the closest she gets. This is an indication of like, oh, you're not just jealous. Like that's the, that's why you're not like letting me look into Bruce Wayne is because you don't like our relationship or, or whatever. Then that gets, you know, the ethics then of, um, like, what is, you know, it takes kind of two to tango here. Like, Knox is a creep, and he should he should be reading the signs of, like, all right, just back off, man. But to be fair to him here, like, he, it, do you think he's sincere when he's just, like, you know, she's like, oh, I'm just trying to do my job. And he's like, you know, me too. I'm trying to protect my partner. Or do you think? I think he is now sincere. I think There's he's There's no changed. reason to think he's not, is there? I mean, he spent most of the movie just trying to get with her, but he seems to have resigned himself to the fact that that's probably not happening now. Yeah, I, I, I believe him. I trust him. Okay. 
And he, he seems annoyed that she's not letting him in on what she's doing. I mean, I, on one hand, I don't blame her because, you know, would you want to really work with this clown? <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a buffoon, isn't he? But, you know, we've grown kind of attached to him throughout the course of these episodes. I wouldn't really rely on him for anything, but he's, he's trying now, you know. I don't know, I don't know if I've grown close to him. <laughs> like, I had a bit of time for him, like, back in minute 10 or whatever. <laughs> and, like, now it's now he's screwed it up all over again, this guy. That's <laughs> But yeah, it's still got this kind of like, well, it's, you know, that, that's the question that's sort of like up in the air now. It's like, well, you know, he, he has this business now of like, oh, forget about Bruce Wayne. I'm on to Batman. And it's kind of like, you know, this guy's a journalist. Could he not sort of piece together, even if we, you know, she is beginning to put, the, you know, the cogs are whirring in motion of like, oh, this millionaire I slept with and now he's fobbing me off. You know, we're joking, saying like, "Oh, he's she's just become like a kind of fatal attraction psycho." <laughs> but she could be a bit more like, "I want to know what this guy's up to. Something's something suspicious about him. Maybe it's something to do with this other thing I'm looking into." And you think like Knox himself would be a bit more like, "Yeah, that Bruce Wayne's a bit of a weirdo." And like, <laughs> and plus this business here, like this is the official um, thing we get of like them flat out saying there's no photos of him, there's no history on him, there's nothing, and it's like, how does like a, pro- a, a public figure like Bruce Wayne successfully do this for years, you know, without like... Well, he's, he's basically a recluse, isn't he? He doesn't really go outside even. And that's all well and good, though, except for he threw a, pa- a party in his house. And... <laughs> yeah, but he, he kind of milled around for a little bit and then he, he left the main party area as quick as he could. So I think he shows his face as and when needed and then slinks away... Into the night, much like Batman. Do you, do you think he maybe had like a policy? Like, if you come to this, no flash photography at this party. There's no photography outright. There's no press. Although well, Vicky Vale got a press pass, I guess. So, but uh, so it's a bit like going to uh, North Korea. Uh, it could be. Yeah, maybe that's I guess. <laughs> Bruce Wayne's. He's looked at the North Korean like uh, the, 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 all their policies. It's like that's what I want my house. That's how I think it's. <laughs> Except you know, I want my my underlings to be much. Uh, oh no, he ideally, he, yeah, it's like I want my underlings to be much better liars as well. So, <laughs> well, swiftly changing it to a slightly different topic, <laughs> um, a, a much lighter topic. I think Vicky, she kind of suits these glasses. She's rocking those. Uh, they're kind of awful, but amazing at the same time. You know. Uh, but I thought, is this that old sort of eighties technique of showing us that she's the real deal? You know, she may be beautiful, but look, she's studious too. A real hard worker. They always used to do that in the 80s. How do you make them look intelligent? It's, it's, to this day, I think it's still that's that's, <laughs> that's still the, the she's all that approach of like, oh, this dorky nerd. She's got her hair up and glasses on. She couldn't possibly be beautiful. <laughs> oh, what? The, her glasses fell <laughs> off. What? what, what, what? <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> I may be biased as a glasses wearer, but I think glasses are more beautiful. Oh, she, she does look great in these. And uh I think we we alluded to this before, but I think like it's the same specs that Bruce himself has got. What what if she stole Bruce Wayne's glasses? <laughs> that's just like that's how uh, geez, this could be like the, the you know the Joker is not the only nut job that uh, Bruce Wayne's got to worry about. Uh, he's got the I don't know what what kind of supervillain name you give her like the the harlot from hell or whatever we're coming from. Does she just go around Gotham stealing glasses? That would genuinely be a problem for me. Like, if someone stole my glasses, I, I, I couldn't, like, live a normal <laughs> life. I couldn't get to the optician to get more. That seems like that would be like a like a 1960s Joker scheme as well. <laughs> Just like, I'm stealing all the glasses in Gotham, and then oh, 30% of the population won't be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's dastardly. And these days, it'd be more than 30% of the population. It's like 90%. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, I will also note that uh, you point out uh, Vicky's glasses. I like um, the little thing. I had to actually looked this up because I wasn't too sure what you called them. But the little business on uh, Knox's arm. This is this really old school thing you used to see way back when. The, the oh, little, yeah, little yeah. armband thing. Apparently it's called uh, it's a sleeve garter. Oh. Which uh, a sleeve garter is a garter worn in the sleeve, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> oh my god, I never would have guessed. Uh, it allows men to customize sleeve lengths and keep their cuffs from becoming soiled while working, or at the correct length when worn under a jacket. Which is, um, but it's one of those things you still always see, like you know, the old 
like the old piano players and bars and stuff used to always have this little you know. and everyone in Deadwood yeah yeah exactly and uh, it's one of those like it, you know along with the sock suspender it's a thing that just mo- modern practicalities in, in suit wearing have rendered it completely obsolete basically <laughs> so. I, I say we bring it back I think it's stylish I think it's pretty cool I'm yeah. just going to wear them to work people already think I'm weird Something, something I noticed in this scene as well. Um, like, assuming, I, I, again, I assume this is the newspaper office, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the same. It's at least the same building. It's meant to be the same. Are, are they actually this busy? Because, I mean, at least these days, I imagine that they're not. Because this looks hectic as anything. But I imagine these days, you know, most staff would probably be working remotely. They'd be off-site. Or they're all freelancers or interns who aren't even being paid. Mm. <laughs> so, but this is set in another world. This seems to be the busiest office of all time. Well, it reminds me of that kind of like um, His Girl Friday, like the old 1940s news office was like everything's just kind of like, get this done. Ready to go. Ready to go. Straight down the front page. Everyone's just running all around all the time. It's what they kind of did in the. Um, you know, Sam Raimi Spider Man with like J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. Where it's just like, oh, it's just like everything's just blah, 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 the whole time. Like, <laughs> I want pictures of Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, but freaking Alexander Knox. It's like, if he just stood up for himself a bit more, grew a bit more of a, you know, got a bit more gumption, he would be like, I want pictures of Batman. Damn it, that's what you thought you were here to take pictures of Batman. Now you're my Bruce Wayne. What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what about my desk by noon? <laughs> I kind of really wish that was the film now. <laughs> Somehow we could retroactively go back and place place J.K. Simmons as in as as Knox, and then like everyone would be like, "Why wasn't this the biggest character in, in anything ever?" Like, is this? Well, we could just go. We could just next episode invent our own minute and see if anyone notices. It. <laughs> just... Ash, you have to keep our secret. Okay, no problem. <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, in terms of like, this is the, we're talking about the beginning of um, Vicky's uh, stalking. Now we cut to, uh, <laughs> you're outright doing it. Um, uh, we cut to the front door of the the Wayne mansion. And uh, Bruce strutting out here with his collar popped like he's the friggin' Fawns or something. <laughs> well, yeah, did this occur to you as well? When I first saw him come out of the house and getting into the car, I was really taken aback that he drives himself. Because I just assumed Alfred also drove him everywhere. Like when he was in Bruce mode. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he drives the Batmobile. But uh, we don't know that yet. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's I've looked into this um, into this car just to see, like, uh, so it's, you know, I'm not any kind of gearhead. I don't know if you two fellas know anything about cars at no, all. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're really talking to the wrong pair, are you? Mm. <laughs> so look, I decided then, because apparently there is, like, thankfully a whole, like, I am... CB or whatever you call it, like the, the, the some kind of car database anyway. And uh, our savior. All I know about cars is one pedal makes it go, one makes it stop, and then there's some mystery third pedal <laughs> that has some something to do with the gears. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a black car. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's more insight than I could have given. <laughs> Even I was worried like, is it black? <laughs> it's like, is it, or is it? Yeah, maybe dark green, possibly. That's it. Or is it very, 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 very dark blue? <laughs> But uh, apparently, I do know that it is a 1978 Plymouth Valeri, or Valari. Uh, I noted because I was trying to, like, oh, maybe there's, there's got to be some reason why they chose this car. Because quite probably, it's just like, oh, this was like Tim Burton's car. Or was it not even Tim Burton's car? It was like, oh, it's like the second unit director's car or something. <laughs> like, what car do you imagine Tim Burton in, other than a hearse? <laughs> it's got to be a hearse. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's just like... Or like maybe like a, a really weird, like a, a jet black like beetle or something like a little a little Volkswagen be- beetle that's just like but it's completely like a dark like n- not none more black color just to make it a, a bit weirder Ooh, but with stuff. purple dark purple leather seats oh ah, there you go yeah oh I want that so look up now Tim Burton's car and it's just like a white sedan or something <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just a Ford. <laughs> But um, so I was thinking, like, oh, is this like a good car or is this like whatever? And like, if if you go onto those forums, like the first comment is like, I would have thought Bruce Wayne could afford something better than this piece of crap, basically. Ah, oh, uh, are these the same people who dissed the DeLorean? Because I'm not standing for it. I don't, I don't know. But the thing is, it, it adds into my 
theory of what's going on here because as we'll find out spoilers for the next minute this is bruce going out now to uh check out uh crime alley and uh, to you know leave roses on where his parents got shot and stuff and because we know he's a low-key guy you know and uh, he doesn't want to draw too much attention i'm i'm assuming he purpose uh, purposefully uh, it was difficult to get up for some reason. Um, um, <laughs> and the way you re-delivered it, I'm going to have to leave the flub in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, purposefully, uh, he uh, has taken this rather kind of run-down, like sort of, eh, car. Uh, so no one will look at him. And then like, Alfred's not driving him because then that would even look weird. It's like, oh, it's an old guy driving this guy around. Is he rich or what's going on? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, do you think maybe he just doesn't even want Alfred to know? But yeah, I think I like your idea. He doesn't want Alfred to know... Or it could be that he just like it's too personal. It's like I don't want Alfred there. I don't want him to, to him. It'd be awkward. It's probably him a bit of both, isn't it? He's going incognito, but it's also he doesn't want to share it with uh, with Alfred or anyone. Mm. Yeah, one one kind of feeds into the other, I suppose. Yeah, but uh, it's like you know, as is our want, uh, did a little bit of linkage with the because it's like, oh, what, what? Why have they chosen this car? And I was like, oh, it was a nineteen seventy eight. That was the same year Superman came out. Yeah. Nah, come on. And then, uh, you think Tim Burton cared about that? And then I was looking at the, the license plate. That's eight two nine VLS. Got nothing there. I was hoping for like <laughs> you know like Bat One or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Tracy Island. <laughs> it could be. You can have it. Maybe he's like that's Bruce Wayne. Like I watch sit around watching Thunderbirds and then I go out and fight crime. Well, I suppose actually in the original series. It was a bit more like Thunderbirds, wasn't it? With the uh, the back copter yeah. and all this nonsense. It was literally, yes, people called them. They just went and f- sprung into action with the same footage they used to use over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Now I just want to watch Thunderbirds. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, but then uh, um, this is probably not it as well. But I did think it was like a little, um, uh, it was something. Because the Volare in Italian means to fly. And what flies? Oh. Bats. Bats fly. Oh, and then uh, I got an even you know this one is purely coincidental, but uh, Valari is also the more commonly used name for a song, an Italian song called "In the Blue That Is Painted Blue," which we all know because it's that uh, Volari, oh, it's like <laughs> you know that you know that song, right? Oh, of course, yeah, I sing that every day. <laughs> you know, come on, you have to know that song. It's like an old Dean Martin one. Is it? Uh, did the Sex Pistols cover it? So I'm not too sure otherwise. <laughs> Ash, you must know this song. Come on. Yeah. Um, what's his face? Andy Kaufman does it when he's the other guy that he is sometimes. Yeah. Oh. oh, Tony Clifton. Yeah, Tony Clifton sings it. And that brings version. me actually conveniently to my next little thing, because as oh. uh, as we all know, like Andy Kaufman, depending on what you believe, he either knew Tony Clifton or he was Tony Clifton. <laughs> And um, of course, I think I know what side of the fence I'm <laughs> on. But of course, then Andy Kaufman starred in Taxi with Danny DeVito, who went on to be the Penguin. Oh. And then Andy Kaufman and Tony Clifton were played by Jim Carrey, who was the Riddler in Batman Forever. So there you go. Everything's connected. I've got to say it. It's become my catchphrase, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> But, I've been told mm, this. Oh yes, people put it up in the uh, on, the, on the Listen Society. It's like, uh, yes, uh, it's been commented on, and we have noted your comments. <laughs> but uh, and then beyond that, there's like, um, it's like, oh, is there, is it, it's apparently that these cars are in like every film ever, but uh, prominently features in Death Wish Three, the best of the Death Wishes, uh, <laughs> Magnum PI, Death Wish Harder, <laughs> Cobra, it's in Cobra, oh. and uh, it's also in. Homeboys 2, colon, crack. So, that's... <laughs> the classic. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we please watch that and analyze that in the uh, in the hiatus? <laughs> so we're just waiting for, like, the spot that, that sweet, sweet 1978 Plymouth Volare. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just stop the movie once that's been it. But, uh, yeah, then we... Uh, that takes off at a uh, Wayne Manor, and um, we got a brief shot of Vicky... And up wearing a a very uh, a, a mighty fine hat, I have to say. Well, yeah, that made me laugh because this is Vicky's version of going undercover, <laughs> putting a hat on. <laughs> well, there's a black hat. You know, it's like black just blends in everything, right? True, true. How did she get to England so fast? 
<laughs> yeah, and how does Bruce commute all the time? Because he's very clearly in England. <laughs> this don't look like any American mansion I've mm. seen. What I like as well, Vic- Vicky there, she looks sort of at the same time worried, nervous, and inquisitive all mm. at once. Like, what do you think she's expecting to find out about Bruce? Because I'm going with, like, she thinks he's got a wife and kids or mm. something. Like that seems to be my thing. Like, wait, wait, what's he up to? That's just, that's, again, I mean, this is the thing. We'll, we'll probably get into it more in next minute. But it's just like, this is, you're just taking this on. This is like, you're you're counting this now as part of your job is to, to stalk this man. And it's like, the right guy's got, I know he's rich. I know he fobbed you off, but he's got a right to his privacy. And this is a bit weird. And it's just like, I don't... well, I mean, he did blow her off. She, she thinks there's something up with yeah. him. Actually, come to think about it. When I was going through the original draft, there was a line where she specifically asks him outright if he's already married. So I'm thinking maybe she's had bad past experiences with this kind of thing. And yeah, we don't. We, we never really get told what she what her motivation exactly is. It doesn't seem to give us much chance to get no. to know that, does it? No, no. It's a real, but I think he, he likes um, to have the sort of the main female, or at least during this sort of phase of Tim Burton, he likes to have the sort of main female character morbidly curious about the male lead. Bit like you sort of, bit like your Lydia or the lady from Edward's hands or whatever. Like, which probably just because he likes, he, does he just like being looked at in that way, or or do you think that, you, that you're meant to put yourself in in those characters' shoes? Or it could be uh, one's a lot better than the other. Yeah, yeah. If you take like Tim Burton's, like you know, he deals with outsider characters that obviously he relates to. Maybe he likes the idea that like, these beautiful females have been so entranced by him that they have to. Like all the all the girls, like I know they're not hanging out with me, but like maybe they're really intrigued and they're actually looking into me when I'm not there and stuff. <laughs> I'm actually the cool kid. That's definitely the sense you get, right? Like, like yeah, is it really blatant in Edward Scissorhands? And yeah, so yeah, very, no, like, so the, the Winona Ryder character is, the, you know, Vicky Vale been played by Winona Ryder. This would have been a hat trick of just like, yeah, if your female lead just like really getting really nosy and investigating things that mm. potentially could lead to things you know, so. i think that's why he hasn't really explained it because he just sort of assumes that that's what people do yeah that's normal yeah. in his life <laughs> yeah. but um anyway in terms in terms of the action for the minute though that's uh that's all i've got unless you two fellas have any specific points you want to bring up about what's Not happening here because um i'm yeah. tapping out uh if not though we can move on to uh ash because um I think because you're a little bit older than us, and uh, a lot of the guests we've had on are around the same age, so and the, so we all have this sort of thing like, yeah, we grew up with this film, but we weren't really kind of there when it was big, like we were alive, but no one was like consciously like, oh, Batman. Um, but w- w- were you a bit more uh, like when? The- yeah, well, I, I, th- I think I was. Well, I, I was seven, but I, I was definitely a big, vic- oh, big victim of big victim of like. Batmania and the, the in the in the sort of target demographic, I think, f- for it, and um, cost my mother a gr- great deal of money, basically over Batman. It was it was sort of the center of the universe for <laughs> quite quite a few years. Like, but can, following the well, it seemed like well, it probably wasn't actually that long that longer time, but it's, time seems like to go a bit slower at that age. Mm. Oh God, yeah. I mean, a week feels like mm. a year. But uh, so, do you remember like like the first time you saw it or anything or? Yeah, I remember not not being able to go and see it because it was a it was one of the first twelves, wasn't it? So I was, I was oh, just shy of being yeah. able to go and see it. But then um, I think we I think we managed to get all the like a blurry pirate copy, and by that point I had already had the comic book adaptation and like all the merchandise and the Amiga game and the the board game and the, the tie in books and a bunch of toys and stuff like mm. that, and just assumed that it was the best film. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> Oh, I'm um, delighted we finally have someone on who also had the board game. No oh, one yeah, else has yeah, even yeah. heard of this damn board game. I used to make people play it all the time, and I don't think anyone really enjoyed it, except for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, the mechanics, I think I've described it in an earlier episode, they're very simple. They were like, here's a card telling you where to go. You go there, and then you've basically got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> like, wins the game. <laughs> I seem to think it was fun at the time, though. I don't, don't really know why. Mm. Oh, I was obsessed with it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, like, you, you were probably uh, I think you're the first. But I think Ricky he alluded to like, oh, he was he was in the grips of uh, Batmania as well. But like, you saw it firsthand then, at least. Like, it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty serious. Like, because I remember that um, you have like, because I know I've seen like the 
like the cereal and everything. So I remember thinking it was a really cool box. It was like a proper Batman, like a black box Batman cereal. I was like, oh, man, this yeah. looks awesome. But like, <laughs> is it is it me getting old? Right, because I, maybe I'm just old and I don't notice these things. But do kids not have cool themed cereal anymore? When I'm in the shop, I don't see stuff like that. <laughs> Well, the, yeah. actually, I did spot uh, the other day in Tesco a Rogue One cereal. So, oh, there you go. That's blown it out the water. There, <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. It could be that they save it a bit more because, like, maybe back in the day, you had like, oh, the mask cereal and <laughs> everything, <laughs> speed cereal. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> that's that's something else. That's what I have for the day, uh, for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, one of, one, of, one of my best Batman memories was, did you, did you ever see that, um, the YouTube clip with the N, the N64 kid who gets really excited over the N64? Oh, yes. I had, I, I, I had that, that was all of us. I had the Amiga 500 version of that, um, which I was pure, purely not expecting to get a computer, but it was the Batman edition. So that as I was unwrapping it, it just it looked like I'd got like a back computer or something like that, which I just obviously it was like a toy or something, but completely freaked out anyway. And then it turned out to be a computer with the Batman game on it. And then I played the Batman game for a bunch of time and it just went completely insane. It was great. Um, that was probably back in the day where you'd you'd happily play the same game for about oh, a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think there's any chance that the computer itself is still around, like your mum's house or something? Or is it like, no, that's long. That's long. No, it's, I, I don't I, I was trying to work out the other day what actually happened to it. I've got, it, it gets it gets blurry and then PCs start getting involved. But I don't, I don't, know, what, I don't know what happened to it. I think it just... Fell, fell apart like one key at a time until it wasn't oh, uh, it wasn't usual anymore. But, mm. We respect it for its service. But like seeing that, you know, if you were in the the, the the grips of this film, then would it be safe to assume that like for you that like this version of Batman is still Batman, or have you like have you gone like no, I'm more like I've read more of the comics now and I'm more like that's I, I don't think it's accurate enough, or were you like so enamored by like the Nolan films you're like no, this is Batman now or do you have like a, a sort of loyalty to one version of it over any other? Um, the, it kind of is this. It kind of is this film. Like I, I don't think it's the, the 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 greatest interpretation of Batman or anything like that. But it, it is the best sort of like standalone. Everything comes full circle. Sort of not too involved. One off. One sort of like one. Is, is, that, I, I definitely can't. I, I've never been able to get into the Christopher Nolan stuff or anything like that. And probably just because they're not this film. Yeah, really. Yeah. Like, so I believe what I believe what everyone says that they're brilliant, but I just can't. I just can't get into them. But uh, considering now you have the the floor now, Ash, though, is there anything cool. you'd any, anything you'd like to say though about the this film or anything Batman related in general that you'd like <laughs> to get off your chest? Or? I don't know. The, 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 there's there's lots of things, but they the, they feel very sort of random to just drop in, uh, just start <laughs> start ranting about. Oh, I. I Actually, there's another good one. There is, I had the um the the Prince soundtrack, the, the soundtrack album by Prince on cassette. Oh and, yes. Um, it was confiscated when my mum was going through a fundamentalist Christian phase by a friend of hers who because I played it to the daughter. There's a lot uh, during that time. Oh, like, oh. I used to I used to always I used to always have to explain like what Ninja Turtles were to these kids or like um, Ghostbusters and things like that because they were sort of off living in sheltered, sheltered lives like that. Oh, and, no, the poor kids. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think the, the mum got wind of this Prince album going on and obviously heard the stories of this awful man. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and then I had my Prince album confiscated. It was awful. Oh, no. Well, that's quite <laughs> funny, of course, because Prince is exceptionally religious. Mm. Well, yeah. So, but it doesn't really come across in 99% of the music. <laughs> in his own way, I'm sure that is him. Praising the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> in his own sexy, sexy way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God made the ladies. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I think, I, is, that, is that it? Is that what... I'll do our, my little show outro, I guess. In, well, actually, no, you say, oh, it's the end. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the end. <laughs> no, it's, it's the, uh, yeah, this is the, the, the end of minute 44 then. So um, I'm, I'm done. I'm out, baby. Yeah, we're all, we're leaving you. We're fleeing. We're going to go and enjoy our Wednesday. Uh, so join us again. We'll be back on Friday and we'll have minute 45. And uh, unfortunately, Ash won't be with us. Oh, but we will have a new guest, a secret guest. We won't tell you who it is. You'll have to just tune in. It's that exciting. <laughs> we never tell you, to be fair. So yeah. I don't know why I thought you would uh, expect that. But make sure to get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. Just look us up on there, Bat Minute 89 We'll come up straight away and rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. Ash, 
Would you like to promote anything of yours that's floating out there in the ether? Um, not today. No, I'll give it a mess today. <laughs> oh. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you do want to check out anything Ash has done, you can listen to the. You can listen to the previous episode on Monday because he, he plugged his band <laughs> Double Echo and their new album. So listen, listen to that on Bandcamp. The man is, the man who's got he's been in like five bands since I've known him, and they've all got stuff out there that you could buy. But eh, forget about promoting any of that. He, <laughs> he's a very modest man about the music, but do check it out. Okay, it uh, is go- great. Google Zombina and the Skeletons. Google White Blackula. Google Double Echo and Google Apat and Google Dick Limerick Academy. And I've been done all those records at some point. Yeah, there you go. Actually, yeah, you're the second person from the Dick Limerick Academy. We didn't mm, mention yeah. this. Jeez, how did, how did we not bring that up? Well, it's <laughs> but, quite yeah. a long time ago now, I suppose. <laughs> well, yes, that's the end of today, unfortunately. So join us again on Friday, minute 45. We will be back. Uh, next time, shadowing Shutterbug as our gloomy yet gregarious grant giver goes as about his grieving. Will his pensive pastimes be picked by a perturbingly predisposed paparazzo? Find out Friday, without Friday. Find out Friday, same bat pod, different bat minute. <laughs>